One of the ways to attract the attention of your students is to relate chemical applications to food. And so when my students are in a unit on energy, I start off the class by writing the three letters M, R, E up on the board. And I ask anyone if they know what those three letters stand for. And eventually, someone will come up with, oh yeah, I've heard about these, meals ready to eat. Now these are rations that have been around in the armed services since about 1981, but they really gained a lot of prominence during Operation Desert Storm. And they've evolved over the years. Uh, sometimes they're affectionately referred to as meals rejected by everyone, but they've really tried to improve them. So I've got a meal ready to eat that I'd like to show you the components. And I think it's good that my students know about some of these things. So let's just dump out the contents. This is the container of our meal ready to eat. And then what I do is I, I show them all these components. Of course, we need to have a, a utensil here. And uh, notice that it's brown so that it's in camouflage. We have some cheese spread. And of course, we've got to spread that on something. So we have crackers. We have shortbread cookies for dessert. We also have M&Ms for a snack. Now this meal ready to eat is chicken with salsa. And here is our entree. We also have to accompany that some Mexican rice. And we've got some beverage, cappuccino mocha. Sort of like going to Starbucks. Now, we'll come back to this entree, but one of the things that I like to do is show them the ingredients of this separate packet. We've got more coffee in here, taster's choice. We have non-dairy creamer. We have salt, we have sugar, and Tabasco sauce. This apparently is one of the real premium things. People trade for the Tabasco sauce. I think it kind of kills the taste of the entree. They don't like it. Uh, in case you're up close with uh, your, uh, your fellow soldiers, we have chiclets here. Now. We have a moist towelette so they can clean up. This is kind of interesting. We have a book of matches. And I talked to my students about back when uh, rations were used in, say, World War II. And some of them have grandparents that might be able to remember back to that. I said, what do you think the matches might have been used for? And then they remember that they used to actually put cigarettes in the rations. But that's not what we do nowadays. Now, this is the last thing I show them because this one really amuses me. So there's this little packet, and we open this up. Toilet paper. So we've got everything you could possibly need from beginning to end of our meal. <laughs> but the thing is, let's get back to our entree here. Now, I guess if you're really desperate and you're out in the field, you'll just cut this open and eat it. But generally, we like our food heated. So the question is, how are you going to heat it? And they're not going to use the matches. In fact, we talk about why they wouldn't want to start a fire, because it would tell the position of where they were if they were out somewhere. So also accompanying in the MRE is a device called an FRH. And this is a flameless ration heater. And this is where the chemistry comes into play in this unit. So, Let's just write down these three letters for reference. F, R, H. So we know the military is really big on using letters. And this is the flameless ration heater.
Now, I'll first describe how you use it. I'm not going to cook a meal for you. My students are always kind of disappointed about that. On occasion, you can, but uh, that gets to be a little bit expensive. But the way that you use the flameless ration heater with your entree is you tear it apart, and there's a line down here at the bottom. It says, do not overfill. You pour water into this so that it's between those two levels on the lines. And then what you do is you slide. Notice how nicely all this fits together. You slide the entree in, fold this over, put it back into the cardboard container, and then it tells you to prop it up on a rock. Now that might be a little tough if you're out in the desert, so you can use your helmet. But the idea is that you lean it up against something and let it set for about 15 minutes and you get a heated entree here. Okay, well let's look at this flameless ration heater a little bit closer up. So I'm gonna take it back out, dump out the entree, and now what I'm going to do is cut open the lower part of this so that we can get at the material that's in the flameless ration heater. In other words, this is what's going to react with the water. And I refer to these as baffles because we have four of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these open and test the material. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just cut them apart and just take one of these and we'll set it down. And we'll take a very powerful magnet. This is a neodymium magnet. And bring the magnet up to the baffle. And notice that it picks it up. So what do you know about one of the components? That it's iron. That's the magnetic metal that certainly comes to mind with your students. Now, what I'm doing here is going through as if this were a demonstration. But there are also ways to do this with your students as an experiment. And so we'll look at how we can test these things. And you'll be able to see how you might put this into an experiment as well. So first thing we know is that one of the components is magnetic and iron comes to mind. Now we're going to do something that my students find really exciting because anytime you can burn something, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle some of this into the burner flame. And what I do is I just put some on a spatula and sprinkle it in there. In fact, let's, let's take a look at this. Let's dump some out so we can see really what it looks like. We can see that it's kind of this gray powder. All right. So let's uh, fire up our Bunsen burner. And let's sprinkle some in. Now, we know there's powdered iron in there. But when we see those white sparks, the metal that comes to mind is magnesium. So it turns out that magnesium is also present in the flameless ration heater. Now, we also want to test with some water and some other ingredients. I'm going to clear off a little bit of space here. And we're going to put some of the flameless ration heater into the well plate. And we're going to add some water to it. And what we're doing here is we want to look at some of the products. We already know that it's got magnesium and iron. But one more thing that we can test for as far as the reactants, and then we'll get to the products, 
is uh, we're going to add some silver nitrate. And essentially we're going to add some silver ions. Now it's a little murky in there to begin with, but when we add in the silver nitrate, we get a white precipitate forming. And of course this is the standard qualitative test for the presence of chloride ion. And what would be the most common chemical that would have chloride? Why, it's sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is also in the flameless ration heater. So that pretty much summarizes our reactants. We have magnesium, we've got some iron in there, and we've got some sodium chloride. Now, I'm going to take more here and we're going to test it again with water. But we're going to add phenolphthalein. Now, phenolphthalein, as you know, is an acid base indicator. And when we add phenolphthalein in here, we get that bright pink color. So we know that we're producing a base as part of this reaction. Now, we see bubbles forming with this a little bit with the water. So we know that one of the products is also a gas. And so what we want to do now is to collect that gas. And so what we're going to do is take and place, again, some of the material into a test tube. And I'm just going to put some that just pretty much fills the curve of the bottom here. And we know that sodium chloride is in here. So we're going to add a little bit of sodium chloride to this. Now, what is the need for the sodium chloride? Well, actually, the sodium chloride speeds up the reaction. So we're just going to add some in there. And I'm going to add water. And then I'm going to run a tube. I'm going to collect the gas by water displacement. So we have our test tube over here that's filled with water. And as soon as I add water and stopper this, we're going to run that tube over into the other tube. Now, of course, there's some air in the tube, as there is air in the top of the test tube. So um, we're we're going to collect perhaps a let a, a little bit of that air escape, and now we're going to collect the gas. And of course, what's the best way to test for a gas? Splint test. So we're going to do that in just a moment, as soon as we get the test tube filled. Now, you can talk about corrosion of metals, and I think your students will know that things tend to corrode in a saltwater environment. Okay, so now let's take and test our, our gas. So let's light a splint. And we get that pop that we recognize as what gas? Hydrogen. So now we have determined that we get a basic product from the phenolphthalein, and we get hydrogen gas. And let's go back and write this equation on the board. Magnesium plus water yields hydrogen gas and it's magnesium hydroxide that causes that pink color. So there's our balanced equation. Now remember it's a flameless ration heater. And actually, you can give the students the value for the heat of the reaction. It's exothermic. Remember, we're in an energy unit. So it's a delta H is negative. And it's 351 kilojoules per mole of magnesium. Now, with the students, you can also extend this into having them determine the delta H rather than giving them an actual amount. And to do that, 
what you would do is have them set up a styrofoam cup for their calorimeter inside of a beaker so it doesn't knock over. And you could have them make measurements of the flameless ration heater and add it to a given amount of water and record the temperature change before and after and calculate out the actual amount of heat. So that's an extension of this experiment besides the qualitative description of the meals ready to eat. Now, I want to say one more thing about the MRE. Uh, I think you probably know when the Armed Services develops products that oftentimes those products make it into the civilian life. And so the same thing has happened with the MRE. It turns out that the company that developed the flameless ration heater actually set about designing these, which are called heater meals. Now, it's interesting to talk about how companies go to design this, because when you open this up, of course, you have your, your utensils, and you have your entree. And underneath the entree, you'll notice something that looks very familiar to us. It looks just like the flameless ration heater pad. But that what accompanies this heater meal is a little packet. Now you might say, well, wouldn't somebody have access to water? And this packet isn't just water, it's salt water. And I called the company and I said, why do you put salt water with this? In the original FRH that we tested, we know that there's actually NACL within the baffles. And so we know that the NACL is there to increase the re reaction rate. And the company told me that when they're shipping these around the country to various retail outletters, outlets, that the problem is that what if there's moisture that gets to the flameless ration heater pad and just in general. And so they felt that it was, it cost them a lot more money to ship it having the salt in with the pad than shipping it this way, interestingly enough. But this is used the same way where you sprinkle the salt water on here, put this on top, stick it back in here, and heat it for 15 minutes. So like I said, I think that when you can sit and apply chemical concepts to something that's near and dear to their heart, like food, then you've really hooked them from the beginning.